Hello everyone, this video is in continuation to our videos on animal kingdom where we were discussing about the different phylums. We have completed annelids in our last phylum in this video. So in our last video, in this video, we'll talk about arthropods and in our next video, we'll talk about the example of arthropods. Uh, sorry, the classification. We'll do the classification first. That's very important. And then the examples talking about arthropods. Now arthropods, they are they have a very you know they are the largest phylum this is the first thing and they are known as arthropods because they have jointed legs so first of all they are the largest phylum fine they are the largest phylum plus they are called arthropods due to jointed legs present in them these are the two very significant features of arthropods as i've already told as i already tell you in all the videos that the basic features which we started from you know um, round worms that the basic are like diplopod uh, they are triple plastic they are bilateral symmetry they have true coelom yes yeah, sub remains the re, remains same for every organism in these characteristic features we will be talking about the specific features which are which are there in arthropods generally jo usse piche wale features and they remain the they remain the same for every phylum so they are the largest phylum and plus they have jointed legs that's why they are known as arthro Ports. Now they are hemocelomate. Hemocelomate. Now till annelids we did that they are true coeloms. They have true coelom, but it is hemocelomate. That means the coelom, the cavity is filled with blood. So iske upper whatever phylum we'll be doing, they'll be hemocelomates. So they, this is a significant three significant features. Then talking about the exoskeleton. Now exoskeleton, there is something specific about it, something different about it. So we'll talk about it. Exoskeleton is made up of chitin, which is a polysaccharide, is a polysaccharide. Fine. So this chitin, it is hard. It is a hard structure which gives it which gives arthropods a hard exoskeleton a hard outer skeleton now when we talk about it this exoskeleton exoskeleton is in the form of plate like or you can say scale like or segment like plate like sclerites sclerites fine so these are sclerites which cover the body of the organism now it's not only one sclerite throughout the body there are multiple sclerites throughout the body when we see the structure of a sclerite what do we see that it has a dorsal a lateral a dorsal part a ventral part and lateral parts now this the upper part of sclerite is known as tergum the ventral is known as sternum and the lateral is known as pleura fine so these are the structures of sclerite these are the parts of a sclerite which makes a single this is a single sclerite one one sclerite fine so it has these this is the dorsal ventral and lateral Fine sides of sclerite. Now multiple sclerites they combine together and form the exoskeleton. Now these sclerites they are joint also, and herein at the joints, at joints have arthropodial membrane present. Membrane present so there is a membrane which helps in joining of different sclerites that's known as arthropodial membrane so these are the this is the structure of sclerite now herein a very significant uh, phenomena is also attached to it these sclerites they are made up of dead cells sclerites are made of dead cells that means they don't grow but the organism it grows in size so what happens organisms they shed off shed off 
exo skeleton and then new sclerites are again formed fine so old sclerites they are shed off and new sclerites they are formed this process is known as echidesis this process is known as echidesis what is echidesis molting of exoskeleton or shedding off of exoskeleton formation of new sclerites is known as echidesis so this is something interesting related to exoskeleton which is different from other uh, phylums then after this we'll be talking about this was all about exoskeleton after this the next part that is their digestive system digestive system is complete digestive system fully developed but have but have different mouth parts different types of mouth parts according to their feeding habits now according to the food they eat according to the uh, type of food which is eaten by them they have different type of mouth parts but the digestive system that is you know uh, very much similar or you can say completely formed in all the other organisms fine they are now here in one more thing a very significant i'll write with a different color they have voluntary muscles present present till now till now we have done that involuntary muscles are present we talked about the circular and the longitudinal muscles herein this is a very significant feature of arthropods that they have voluntary muscles the muscles are under their control they can control their some muscles of their parts of body they, they are under their control so this is a significant character which starts from arthropods that they have voluntary muscles present in it fine so we have talked about the digestive system digestive system is fully developed but there are multiple type of different type of mouth parts according to the type of food they eat the mouth parts can be chewing part they have chewing parts lapping parts like house flies have different parts mosquitoes they have piercing mouth parts chewing parts are there in cockroaches so there are multiple type of mouth parts after that i'll write it here like sclerite and then the next type of system is the excretory system excretory system now excretory system first of all they can be aminotelic or you can say aminotelic they can be ureotelic according to habitat wherever they live we know we have already discussed that the ones who live in water require more water they are uh, uh, most they uh, excrete out most toxic waste and i mean not are the is the least toxic so according to their habitat wherever they live they are they can be aminotelic they can be urotelic but different organisms as they have different mouth parts they also have different structures for excretion for example i will name a few for example green glands in prawn and malpigian capsules are there in cockroaches so there are different structures excretory structures here also which are there in uh, arthropod different type of arthropods for excretion then is the next system of arthropods that is respiration or a respiratory system now the respiratory system in case of arthropods has also certain specific structures for respiration according to the different organisms they have maybe they have gills some of them some may have book lungs fine so some may have uh, tracheary structures tracheary structures so there are multiple multiple type of respiratory systems according to the organism type of respiration then talking about the next system that is the circulatory system circulatory system now when we talk about the circulatory system they have open circulatory system wherein they have tubular heart and the fluid which flows is known as a hemolymph they don't have blood they have hemolymph present in it so they have open circulatory system that means they don't have arteries veins or capillaries sirf tubes hoti hain which are clo not closed from upper surface those are known as sinuses they have a tubular heart and they have hemolymph present in them circulation is single then next is reproduction 
reproduction now reproduction varies male and female are present that means separate sexes are there male males are there and females are there so sexual reproduction takes place fertilization can be internal and external fertilization can be internal and it can be external also then development development can also be direct or indirect when i say direct that means the whole new organism is formed and when i say indirect that means there is a larval stage which is there it for it undergoes metamorphosis so this is about the reproduction so these are the, all the general characteristics of arthropods which are different from the other phylum so uh, according to these there are multiple examples of arthropods as it's the largest phylum we have multiple examples but in our syllabus we have only two we'll be discussing two any two then uh, in our next video this is all about arthropods in our next video we'll talk about the classification of arthropod or the different classes in which arthropods are divided very important topic very important classes so keep watching liking sharing subscribing thank you